Hey guys, Dr. Marcus Wally here with Back in Action Dallas, and today I want to do a video review of Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet, in their own opinion, of course, video on sciatic pain. So these guys are two uh, physical therapists, like I said, they have a huge YouTube channel, a huge following. Um, I've been watching them since I was an undergraduate, graduate school, even in my current profession right now, where I can get different ideas, tips, and tricks from other healthcare professionals that know even more than I do using the years, many, many years of experience. Um, go check them out. I'll put a link to their YouTube channel down in the description below. Um, last time I checked, they had 1.5 million followers, if not more. Um, very, very, very powerful, insightful. They have a wealth of knowledge they're willing to share. They do it in a very fun, friendly way, very easy to understand. And instead of me reinventing the wheel, I wanted to introduce these guys to you so you can have another resource to use for your own health and wellness. So let's go ahead and get into the video so we can see what they're up to. And I'll just kind of guide you through it, walk you through step by step, give you a breakdown, a quick summary, and why it's so important to do these stretches that they uh, suggest in the video. So let's get into it. All right, so this first part, they're going into a uh, what's called a prone position where you're laying flat down on your belly uh, having two pillows prop you up helps take the pressure off of your hips also helps to expand the lower back by opening up the disc spaces within the joints of the lumbar spine or lower back muscles the pillows also act as a prop for the hip more so so you're not putting direct pressure down into the the joints um, this helps to reduce the lower back pain and also just makes you feel a little bit better going into the next position um, eventually you'll take one pillow out at a time uh, and just lay face down again flatten your back Try to keep your elbows as low as possible, if not all the way up. Um, that way you can lay as flat as possible using the pillows to give you that arc that you're looking for. And it helps to reduce the pressure on the lower back as well. Um, eventually, you'll be able to lay flat like he's doing right now. And then from this, you're going to go into the second phase is when you uh, go into the uh, push-up position. And it's not really necessarily a push-up, but more so like arcing up and coming back down to allow your body to reduce the pressure overall and helps to gap the uh, disc spaces. This is called the McKenzie Technique, which is a series of extension exercises for the lower back specifically to help reduce pain of the lower back muscles and also take the pressure of sciatic nerve away from the body. The press ups themselves are really, really good to help open up the disc spaces of the lower back to get the muscles involved, get them moving again, and also just to help the overall body posture to increase the overall extension. Most of the time we're seated and we're always in that position right there. So this is going to help bring the overall awareness of the body back to normal position by changing the angle. Lift up your pelvis, right. you're keeping the pelvis down. You're gently working it this way. That's a good point, Bob. All right, the next progression. The next thing they're gonna get into is called the banana position. Basically, you're laying face down like you did in the first exercise, except for no pillows or anything, and you're shifting your hips away from that side of pain to help uh, uh, open up the opposite side muscles. So if you have sciatic pain going down the right side, you wanna shift your hips to the left side, to help the muscles contract a little bit more on the right side, allowing the left side to open up and elongate. And then from there, you're going to just go into like the push-up position or the extension position where you're coming up onto your elbows and then even up to your hands and going into like a mini push-up position. Curve going yeah. in. Now in this position, you can just lay here for a little bit. You might get up on the elbows. Exactly. And you might also try the press-ups. Press ups. Yeah. And Again. what's going to guide you is if the leg pain is getting better, then you go with it. Yep. Now let's say you find out this works for you. This is the thing that you can do throughout the day for one minute. I mean, that's, that's the idea behind all these. All right, so coming out of the banana position, going face down again, you wanna roll up a small towel, place it right underneath the uh, crease of the hip, right into that joint where that hard bony uh, area is. And it helps to re-level the uh, hips and get the pelvis moving a little bit differently by taking the pressure and the angle away. Um, allowing those joints to go into position where that disc can slide back into more of a neutral position to hopefully take away some of that pressure of the sciatic nerve. Again, if this works, uh, then you can go ahead and do press ups. Right. We're throwing a lot at you. Uh, the next one is like a semi fetal position. They call it the uh, road kill. Um, basically, you're laying face down, you're bringing one knee up towards your armpit, and you're laying in that position for a period of time just to allow the body to stretch out. A lot of times the sciatic pain is coming not necessarily from the lower back, but also the piriformis muscle, which is another muscle on the hip. I'll talk about that later on. But that position right there allows you to open up the joint a little bit more and then go into that push-up position, helps to uh, get the muscles around it activated as well. Again, you're really looking to allow that disc to go into position 
where it's a more neutral position to where it doesn't have as much pressure onto it. Well, for sure, but it's just kind of, a, I always tell a person that it's kind of a weird pressure because you're not going to go as high, but you still follow the same rules. If the leg gets better, it's okay. Okay. All right. The next position, you're going to flip over onto your back, uh, bring your knees up to your chest, and you're basically going rock side to side. Um, that rotation is allowing the disc to go back into a more uh, mobile position. So you're allowing the spine to move side to side by using more of your hips. You're not swinging your entire body off of the bed or the table or the floor, but you're just allowing the muscles in the lower back and pelvis to stabilize and move those joints back to a normal position or a um, more comfortable position. And bring them up yeah. and over. And sometimes that's tolerated a little better and it works a little better. It depends on the individual. Oh, thanks for the little hip, Brad. Brad, I didn't know that one. So it's nice. It, it works for me sometimes. All right. So you can give that one a try. A different this part here, he's going into a uh, side position. This is where I tell people all the time to try to lay in a more neutral position. Um, having your feet arced up on top of that pillow like that, allowing the knees to drop down, creates another type of curve. To take the pressure off the lower back by allowing the hips to separate just a little bit, not necessarily separate away from it altogether, but opening up that joint to take the pressure of that nerve off. Um, the last one that they're going to show you is where they do a flossing position. Flossing is where you have your head extended back and you're bringing the affected leg or the bad leg out all the way in extension. You're raising your toes up. And as your toe goes up, your head goes up and back. And you bring the toes down, leg down, your head goes down. What that's doing is uh, effectively attracting the entire spine because the nerves all start from the brain going down the spinal cord into the hips where they branch out and go out to other parts of the body. Um, and what that does is help to allow your body to more so floss those joints or those openings where those nerves pass through. So, yeah, you're flossing, especially if there's some uh, scar tissue on it that mm -hmm. seems to help uh, decrease that. So, hopefully, that helps. Like I said, their videos are great, but there's a lot of different types of pain of the lower back that can cause sciatic type pain. It's not always truly sciatic pain, sometimes there's just tight muscles, it's stiffness of the lower back, it's muscle imbalance of the lower back. It can be true nerve compression coming from a herniated disc or bulging disc or a ruptured disc of the lower back. It can be piriformis syndrome, which is a muscle on the hip that causes more pain in the lower back. It's a number of different things that cause these imbalances. So even sitting on your wallet throughout the day while you're driving, while you're at your office desk or anywhere else, it's going to cause your hips to become unlevel. And that sudden shift, you know, as thin as your wallet can be, you know, super thin, right? But that's still enough pressure to allow your body to twist and change. And the muscles want to adapt to that because they think that's the uh, normal position. So when you stay like that most of the day, your body wants to adapt to it, right? So uh, that can be a, a factor in sciatic pain. So a few stretches that you can start to do throughout the day, at least one minute for each stretch. If it feels better, do it. If it feels worse, back it up a little bit. Let me know what's going on.